Hello there Leos, welcome to your uh, tarot reading. So um, first off, I would like to apologize for the delay, the tardiness again with your reading. I am sincerely sorry. Um, I was traveling the past few days and I got really sick on the plane. And so my sincerest apologies, okay? I will try my very best um, so that this doesn't happen again. Um, either way, let's go into your reading. Um, I saw two images well actually it's one continuous image but um two themes coming into the picture for you and it's really fun so i'm i'm glad to see this so first of all i see this little boy <clears throat> the scenery looks a little bit like 1920s 1930s um so it's a long time ago and uh, it seems like we're possibly in new york city in the united states it's really odd. Um, so there's this little boy. He's probably five or six and he has a dog, a golden retriever. He has a beret, a black beret on. He has a twill coat and khaki pants and, you know, um, some, some str um, sturdy looking black boots. And he's standing in a corner of the street with his dog, a leash. He's holding onto the leash and the leash is connected to the golden retriever. He's looking at a storefront so it seems as if his adult escorts are in there doing their errands or doing some shopping and he's waiting outside with the dog so you know maybe the store didn't allow the dog to be inside so he'd rather he opted to wait outside with the dog and then um, while he's outside he's looking about there are a lot of you know uh, adults walking back and forth going about their day outside and he sees this mini car this car so i guess it can't be the 19 maybe it's like a trailer coach so it's a car it's it's relatively small it it comes to a stop right by him and then a bunch of people came out of this car so it's a very small car there's no there's no way there's no rhyme or reason why that many people are able to fit in that car why that many people are able to emerge from the car but there are a lot of people i would say 10 12 15 people just walking out of this car and he's looking at it and his eyes are like you know almost about to pop out of his uh, uh out of its sockets so he's like amazed and then he hears a little bit of commotion and he looks up and uh, at this really tall building in front of him and um, it's almost like a skyscraper it looks to me almost like a skyscraper and there are airplanes flying above like fighter jets and there's this giant you know it's like the the King Kong um, this giant a gorilla that has climbed up to the skyscraper and it's swinging about and he's like horrified so he looks around about him and the dog is barking at this time to find the nearest adult and he's telling the adult look look and you know the adult looks at him as a little child and dismisses him and walks on and because he apparently has something that he's that is a little bit more urgent that needs tending to so he walks on he doesn't even bother to look so then the kid tags uh, flags down the next adult a woman and the woman does the same thing and the woman refuses him to to look up and he tries to catch the attention of other adults around him no one pays any attention everyone is really busy going about their day walking very quickly and so he's looking at the sight of this giant gorilla on top of the skyscraper or swinging um, on the skyscraper and his dog is the only thing that believes him you know his dog is barking and he's looking up and his dog is by his side scene cuts out so <clears throat> I feel as if there is uh, some information that you are very privy to and I feel like the people around you are completely oblivious okay so that's the impression that I'm getting here and um, I feel as if there's some shocking revelation, shocking news uh, pertaining to a situation that might not have anything to do with you. 
shocking revelation, shocking news, something that is going to, you know, rip the rug out from under somebody. And you're privy to this information because you happen to be in the right place at the right time. And I feel as if you're not really sure how to handle this information. I feel that onlookers are looking at you and they're, they're trying to either, um, I want to say like draw out the information from you. And I feel that you're keeping your, the information to yourself. You're, you're not really sharing kind of like with the boy in the story, he might be sharing, but I feel like you have time to dissect the situation. And because most of you who are watching this might be adults, you're not like that little boy who's confused and scared. I feel like you've digested the information and now you're trying to figure out what to do with it. And you feel that the, the, the message or the information, if it gets out, it can have long-term ramifications. It, it's a big deal and it can, you know, um, overturn some major events. Okay. So I feel like you're privy to some really important information and, um, you're trying to bide your time. You're trying to be careful who you share this information with because I feel that others are looking at you wanting this to get out, wanting to dig it out of you, wanting to claim it as their own, wanting to be privy to the same knowledge. <coughs> Excuse me. And as a result of it, you're not sure who you trust, who you can trust, okay? Um, when I saw the image of the dog, I think about, you know, very strong loyalties, okay? Um, I feel that there is a potentially like an ethical dilemma. You might have be very loyal to a specific person and you know, Leo's, you guys are all about strength and loyalty. So it's all about, you know, um, who your people are, who your clan are, who you can trust, who, where, where your faith lies. Okay. And so I feel like with this dog imagery, it's all about, you know, being loyal to to somebody uh trusting your gut and doing the right thing and i also feel that this information that you're privy to might affect the life of somebody who's very important to you that you're very loyal to and you're not sure by divulging this information if it's going to help them in any way or if it's just going to cause them worry. So you're waiting for the time to pass. You're waiting, biding your time, waiting for things to pass. Okay. So that's the, the first interpretation that I'm seeing here. The other uh, interpretation that I saw, um, and it, it's the, the, the clown car. Okay. The car, the small car, and a lot of people got out of this car. So it seems more like a wagon, like a horse drawn carriage or something as appropriate in, uh, during that time. Um, what I sense is there's a, a, a situation where you might be a witness to, um, and I feel like, you know, it's a situation where there's like too many people, too many interruptions, too many cooks in the kitchen and too many disparate energies, um, people wanting things this way, wanting things that way. And I feel like no one's really listening. No one's really operating at the best, uh, interest for all of those involved. Everyone wants to get a say. It's a very crowded environment and it can feel almost like you're drowned. Your, 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 um, too many egos is, um, it's drowning out the objective of this gathering. Okay. So you might be in a room full of people, all of which are experts in their field and they're trying to figure out the best course of action. And, I feel that no one is really in the limelight. No one is really, no one is really, no one has an upper hand. Everyone has their ideas of what to do and no one is really paying attention to anybody. And then I also have a situation where, you know, there are, there's like one person and then their group of cronies who are propping them up or who, who's giving or um, manipulating the situation. The cronies behind the scenes are like manipulating the situation to boost or bolster the credibility and the qualification of this one person. And yet 
that person you you see through it and i feel like you you feel like that person's not qualified but their cronies are talking big about them and are making you know trying to persuade you but i feel like you see through it so that's what i'm seeing here we have here the six of crystals this is the six of pentacles okay um and when I look at this deck, I'm looking more at the imagery rather than the um, specific name of the card. And I feel like someone is on high alert and I feel that they're standing behind somebody out of this sense of obligation, loyalty, possibly they're co-opted to do, to take like a specific course of action to support a specific candidate, even though that candidate might not be the best person for the job, okay? And then we also have here the Six of Cups. Once again, this sense of indebtedness, this sense of like, you know, um, uh, uh, what I'm feeling is like a really strong connection. Um, and it's a very positive card, but based on everything that I'm seeing in your reading, I feel it's like, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So people who are like-minded tend to just flock together. And because they're around people who think exactly like them, they echo the same sentiments. They finish each other's sentences. They, they echo the same words, the same themes, the same ideology. And they're not able to think for themselves. So based on this, I feel like in this month, you're going to be that breath of fresh air where you're able to see through, I want to say, through the facade, okay? And it's really asking you, the energy that you embody here, we have the Empress, and the Empress, um, this is a, a low pressure job, okay? The Emperor gets all the limelight. The Empress is very soft behind the scenes types of uh, energy. And the way that she embodies this energy, and you can be male or female watching this, if you're a Leo, doesn't matter your gender. The cards are not gender specific, but the energy of the Empress, somebody working behind the scenes, someone without a lot of um, limelight on them. So they can make mistakes and no one will bat an eye. No one's going to blame them for anything. But with this Empress energy, I feel that, you know, it's a low pressure job. You're in a position where you are advising, giving counsel, or uh, giving somebody information, whatever you're privy to, you're sharing this information with somebody like a confidant, uh, with somebody that you really trust, with somebody that you are standing behind and you trust this person, your gut tells you, you really trust this person. And so <clears throat> I feel like you're seeing through the chaos that's happening around you and you're able to maintain your center and you're able to understand why people say the things that they are and you're understanding you know what incentives they have for coming forward for supporting this candidate for wanting this person for the job and i feel that you're you know writing all of this down taking notes observing everything that's happening around you and everyone else is so busy speaking for the candidate speaking for themselves bolstering their position that they're not privy to everything that you're seeing everything that you're observing everything that you're able to catch you know the micro expressions the little nuances the energy changes the energetic changes in the room you're able to catch it all. And so you're in a very good position to be able to understand people's motives, understand people's agenda. And what I feel is if this message resonates with you, if everything that I've said so far resonates with you, it's really asking you to trust your gut. There are things that we know, we feel it, we hear it, we see it, we experience it, we, um, you know are able to sense it right we can f experience it with our senses or we can just experience it in an, a very intuitive way and even if other people don't agree with us or if other people have never experienced it they can never wrap their heads around it it doesn't diminish what you feel and i feel that the message here is you really need to trust your gut 
you really need to be in a position where you trust your self and you know give yourself credit because the other people even if they don't support you even if they don't believe what you have to say even if they um, they feel that what you're saying is outside of the realm of possibility and they can never give you credit for it it doesn't diminish what you have experienced it doesn't you know even if people are dismissive it should not detract you from the things you believe about yourself we have here the king of feathers this is the king of swords okay this is being very decisive and this is kind of like owning up your power your power of discernment your judgment and it's about logic and justice the way this energy comes across it's an air sign aquarius gemini and libra but you know the depiction is very much you so that's why with this deck i'm pretty much reading the the, the imagery rather than the title so this is like owning your power knowing your own truth and you know not wavering just because other people might not agree just because other people might not have the same experience just because people might not understand okay so hang on to your truth you be very clear about you know i experienced this i saw it with my own eyes and not let other people you know tell you otherwise okay so i feel like the message here is really trusting your gut you're on the right path even if other people don't agree with you it doesn't really matter um, what I'm getting as well we have here the the moon and this is all about you know that intuitive side of us that intuition kicking in knowing that there's something that's going to happen like foreshadowing being very conscientious about you know picking up the signs the signals um, the telltale signs that are, that are <clears throat> warning you or telling you something is going to unfold unravel so we have here the moon and it is about imagination and perception and I also feel here something tells me you know intuition and gut instincts with this combination um, it's telling you that you're right you know what you know because the the source is not coming in through a physical form you're getting intuitive hits you're getting you know like a psychic nudge that what you know is true and you need to stick to your guts and let's say if you are facing somebody okay and you have some information about some type of wrongdoing and their method is deny 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 at all costs and you're coming face to face with this character who might be quite elusive quite articulate is willing to you know talk around you and they they create confusion they create you know uh, accusations they might throw your whatever you have to say back at you and it it, it, it makes you very confused it makes you doubt your theories it makes you doubt your intuition it makes you doubt your reality you saw what you saw leos and i feel like you're doubting your reality because you're dealing with someone who's very muddled very confusing and i feel like you know they're purposely being confusing they might be manipulative they're purposely trying to you know distract you it's like a red herring it's a distraction a distraction from the truth a distraction to draw attention away from them a distraction to make you doubt your reality and so if their tactic has been you know evasiveness half truths um, lying by omission um, deflecting you know getting defensive and things like that then all that's that's all the information that you need that they're the guilty party here so I'm sensing that you need to stand in your truth if you are face to face um, in confrontation with another person or you're trying to um, tell them what you saw and they're being dismissive you have to wonder why they're being dismissive is it something that they are already aware of but in self-denial about so whatever it is I feel like this is you know big 
Um, <clears throat> for some of you, I feel like you might have a friend and that friend might be in a relationship and you see your friend's uh, relationship partner with another person, you know? And so you're not really sure, like, do I tell my friend? You might decide to tell your friend and your friend might be in denial. Your friend might be very defensive and not willing to accept this information. So break it to them gently, okay? I feel like your sense of loyalty overrides all because you want what's best for your friend, right? And so you're going to tell your friend this information. Uh, for some of you, I feel like it's in a work environment and somebody that you work with is being poached by another company, another organization, or they're uh, interviewing for like another company, uh, like a rival company even, and you're not really sure what to do with that information. And I would say that information should be kept private, okay? Because uh, it's somebody's livelihood. It's different. Do you, do you see how the, the two scenarios are very different? So it depends on what's at stake. It depends where your loyalties are. And I feel like, you know, with relationships, with friendships, that's where your loyalties lie. And that's something that you need to tell your the person. But when it comes to work, even if you're working in an extremely competitive environment and you feel like I have a leg up, I have an advantage here because of this information that I'm privy to, I feel that it's affecting the other person's livelihood. So this is not a situation you, you want to get involved in. And so use your discretion, use your judgment, but really listen to your intuition because I also feel like it could be a relationship partner. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, you know, they, their habit is deny, deny, deny. That's their habit. And I, I do sense for many of you, they might be talking to an ex, they might be reminiscing about an ex, they might be in a relationship, you know, with an ex. And there's um, perception here. Your intuition is very strong. You sense something is up. You sense that something is wrong. And I feel that you really need to trust your intuition. And you really should discuss this situation and, um, you know, try to get to the bottom of it. But I do sense that you're dealing with someone who might be evasive. Okay. So enough about that. Um, on the flip side, so moving away from those two imageries where I feel that, you know, there's uh, something that you're privy to, some information. Um, I do sense, first of all, um, there is a really strong there, there is a really strong bond here. So this part is going away. And what I have here, this card has fallen out for all the signs. And I, I do shuffle the cards very thoroughly, but this card has fallen out for all of the signs since I've started using this deck, okay? So starting with Aries. Um, this is a, a very strong emotional connection here. We have the King of Cups and the Six of Cups, a very strong soulmate type of energy. This is like twin flame soulmate. Um, two people who are very identical, very similar, very much alike. And um, I, I feel almost like I feel like there's a relationship here that might be interracial, uh, cross-cultural, or different in some way. So let's say like physically, you might be very different from each other. One person's taller, one person is shorter. Height differences, okay? One person might be very thin, the other person might be a little bit on the heavier side. One person's bald, the other person has really luscious hair. So I feel like there's a opposites attract like initially it's a physical connection where you know there's great attraction and it's opposites attract but then on a soul level the two of you are like peas in a pod okay so i feel like at first glance something is not what it seems at first glance it's so different it's so novel and exciting but at the bottom of it, at the root of it, at the core of it, it's very similar. So I feel like you're, um, <clears throat> for many of you, you might be in a position where you're meeting somebody who might be a really strong soulmate of yours for this month. 
and it's telling you you know to to kind of like take it slow temperance doing things in moderation okay and then i'm also seeing this black and white you know the stripes so i'm, I'm also feeling like the the uh, cross-cultural differences as well as you know possibly being an interracial type of relationship and um i feel that some people might frown upon this you know um what kind of archaic people we're dealing with but you know they they do exist there are people with their prejudices and with their um lack of understanding uh, there might be people that are frowning upon this but i do feel like you feel what you feel and you know what you know and so you know you don't give it any credit don't give it any um any mind don't heed it any mind and don't let other people's narrow-mindedness like affect your perception of yourself your perception of your partner in any way so that's what i'm sensing here and i feel like there is a really strong emotional connection that will really you know be tested for this month um and not in the way that you're thinking but i feel like it's in the, in the way where it's like are we in this together if we're in this together then we can't really let outsiders you know uh tear the relationship apart we really need to be on the same page for some of you it could be like a situation where you have like a difficult child who's trying to drive a wedge in between because you know children that sometimes they know how to turn one parent against another and it's done in a very innocent way because they're not aware of the ramifications of you know long-term um effects of turning parents against each other but it's sort of like we have to be united um on the same page in order to deal with whatever adversity that's coming our way whatever is trying to either affect us our relationship from the outside or from within and so you have to trust your gut you have to know exactly what you believe what you saw what you feel whatever it is you are the keeper of that knowledge and no matter who comes up to you and tells you you were wrong you did not see that you did not experience that that is not real whoever is telling you this don't give it any weight because you saw what you saw you experienced what you experienced it is real and if they're trying to dismiss your experience if they're trying to discredit whatever it is that you're trying to contribute i just feel like you know they're uh they're trying to erase something that they feel is a major threat to them in their way of life and as a result of it i feel like it's done out of fear so don't make other people don't, don't let other people question your reality okay be very firm firmly planted okay this is a very heavy uh bison it looks like a bison it looks like a yeah it's it's very heavy it's not going to be swept away with the wind okay it's firmly planted and all the signs are, are are pointing towards the gut area so i'm just like really listen to your gut listen to that ancient wisdom okay these uh bisons are going extinct here in northern america so they they have like an animal sanctuary but they're heavily inbred which is really sad um anyways going back to my main point <clears throat> stand true to your own knowledge whatever you've experienced okay this ancient wisdom is is what i'm sensing here that can't be that that really can't be shaken and so I'm going to talk about the last two cards here. I have the Five of Crystals. And this is the Five of Pentacles. Um, seeking higher ground. Seeking refuge, right? I feel like there's some type of calamity coming down. And this ladybug is all like, oh no, the ground's going to be impacted. Or affected. And so I'm, I'm seeking higher ground. I'm going to higher elevation. I'm seeking shelter. So it's a really beautiful card. It basically means that you're on the right track. Don't follow the herd. Don't follow the crowd. Seek higher wisdom. Go up to higher ground. Get a higher vantage point. Because from there, you're going to be able to see everything unfold. Okay? So 
we have as well the knight of cups this is charm and passion and what i do feel is um it's kind of uh echoing the same theme this is sort of like this animal is in enclosed in in a body of water okay so it's only pecking or, or looking for um, for food or looking for shelter in, in its very small controlled environment, okay? So it's really asking you to venture out a little bit more and it's also asking you to, you know, you, we, we've done the same thing over and over again, try something else. And so Leos, um, I hope this reading resonates with you. Once again, I apologize for the delay with this reading. Um, I feel like the messages are pretty singular in that it's telling you to, you know, really hold true, trust your instinct, trust your gut, because you know what you saw, you know what you experienced, and you know what you believe in. So don't uh, waver on that front, okay, Leos? I will leave it at that. I will see you guys next week. Oh, I'm sorry, next month. Um, sometime next week for next month's reading. Um, I wish you all the best, and uh, if you are interested in a private reading, I have a link in the description box below for a colleague of mine. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California, and um, you can click on the link, and it'll take you to her website where you can book an appointment for yourself. You can enter your location, the time uh, that you prefer, uh, and the dates, and the website is very user-friendly. So if you're looking for guidance, I highly recommend that you get a uh, reading with her. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care, and I hope this video finds you well. Have um, a wonderful new year, 2020, okay? I'll talk to you soon.